Hello everyone and welcome to my new video and what is this video about? Well, we're going to do this. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. We're going to turn the Octatrack into some sort of button bashy arcade style live performance remix fun box. The Octatrack somehow still remains to be this enigmatic rabbit hole of discovery. And we're going to discover some of these things together. Basically what I'm going to explore is using the other tracks as recorder tracks for something happening on track one and programming patterns that will record that stuff and play it back, but detach those patterns from the main transport so that they can be launched using the track trig keys down the bottom, using the plays free setting in the pattern settings, which we will get to in a minute. I'm going to do this with just a loop that I'm going to load in track one, but you can kind of do this with anything. You could have another machine, you could have the Digitact or your modular or another, a whole other thing, like just coming in on a through machine. It could be, you, you could use a pickup machine and, you know, loop stuff. It could be a turntable. You could do it with a turntable. You could sort of tap, tap tempo and nudge around to match it with the turntable and sample bits. Each of the remaining seven tracks will be just a different kind of sampling and playback idea. And rather than just doing kind of like a one shot sort of sampling and playing back, we're going to take advantage of all the things that we can do with the patterns. This includes things like locking parameters, um, using the LFOs, which I probably won't do quite a lot. I kind of just want to concentrate on seeing what I can get out of just using uh, parameter locks in conjunction with things on the uh, playback machines, which will basically be flex tracks. So quick guzzle a beer. And let's get started. I'm going to go to project. I'm going to go to change. I'm going to make a new project. Create new project, please. Yes. And I'm going to call this P L Y F R for play free because there are no time for vowels when using this type of text entry. Yes. Okay. The new project has been created. I'm going to go to track one and I'm going to go to a flex machine and I'm going to load in. The other day I imported a classic break and decided to see what the workflow was like with cleaning it up. So I've got this really nice, very quiet, but it's there. Fuzzy Haskins, I think it is. Uh, you'll probably uh, recognize it if you're into IDM stuff out there. Let's load that and very quiet. Okay, that's fine. Load that into the flex track. And then I'm just going to um, put that in. Tempo up a little bit. Okay, let's maybe uh, pull up the gain a bit here, shall we? That's better. Okay, that's good. Um, I won't save any of that. That can just be as it is. So there's a couple of things that we're going to need to do to make this interesting. And that is we're going to go into the pattern settings, we're going to set the scale to per track and we're going to go to some of the other tracks and put them into plays free. I won't do that just yet, but that is essentially um, the whole concept behind this is just kind of launching these patterns through with these trig keys here whilst whatever is happening, whether it's a loop or audio coming in, on track one or wherever. I mean, it could be however you want to do it. It doesn't really matter. I'm just doing it this way because I'm going to try and use all the eight tracks. But um, it gets interesting when we have scale per track. So I'm going to, uh, yeah, uh, turn on the slice. This has got slices already in it. Uh, let's set this to eight and this one to eight. And then uh, give this a different start position, I think. Oh, number 70. Okay, maybe I'm going to make this pattern um, twice as twice as long in scale. Yeah, we're going to have to make that 32. 
this is going to work. Let's go 32, please. Let's go back to this thing. Uh, times two. No, nope, what have I done? Ha ha, that's too fast. Okay, that's a funky, that is funky. Right, okay, I'm ready to get funky now, now that I've got that going. Right, so we're going to go into track two, and we're going to double tap track two. We're going to go to a flex track, and we're going to say that we want this to be recorder buffer two. Then we're going to come out of that. We're going to go into the recording setup for recorder buffer two, and I want to record track one on source three. I think I the the trick type I'm not too concerned with because I'm actually going to be using the pattern launching of the pattern in plays free mode to to launch the recorder trick I don't know if this is important anyway let's put a record recorder trick in and I'm going to come out of this pattern or come out of these settings rather and I'm going to go into the scale of the pattern and I'm going to say that I want this pattern to be not 16 steps. I'm going to say that it's 12 steps. Let me see. One, two, three, one, two, three, one. Two. Yes, that might be how. Right. Okay. Let's see how that. See how that works. Let's come out of that. So, let's trigger that and look at it's recording. Yes. And you can also see that it's recording not every 16 steps. It's actually going to be offset to this top sequence. This is when this is when it's going to get interesting. So we can see that it's recording. That's all good. Let's come out of that. Let's put a playback trig in there. Hold that. Press right and offset it by one micro time. Because if it records and plays back at the same time, it might glitch out. But if we micro time it one micro time late, then it won't glitch so much. So we're probably going to hear them playing both at the same time now. Yeah. So one is recording, sorry, one is playing and one is recording. Now I want to jump between all of these different things with the crossfader. So I'm going to go to track one, I'm going to hold scene A, and I'm going to set the volume on that to max on the A scene. And on the B scene, I'm going to set the volume to minimum. Now I'm going to go to track two and I'm going to do the same thing, but the other way around. Scene A is going to be minimum and B is going to be maximum. Right, so now... If the crossfade is there, we're only going to hear track one. You can see that track two is recording and playing back track one. Now, if I go to track two and crossfade over and do something like turn the rate down. So we can mangle what we're recording from track one on track two. So let's look at this plays free thing. Let me just make sure that that's all the way back up. So let's go to function and patterns. Let's go to track two and put this into plays free. Now you can see that we've got some options here. One shot track. Don't want that right now. Trig mode. I want to put it to hold because I'm going to hold track two for as long as I want this pattern to play or this track. This is kind of a little confusing, but basically we're detaching the patterns for each track from the main transport. The transport doesn't even need to be running. You can still launch them and they could just play however they want, plays free. That's why it's called that. The trig modes are, you know, one, which I think is like one and then one to stop and then one, two. I can't remember what they are, but I'm just going to use hold. Uh, trig quantize, we're going to say, I want this to be two sixteenths. So that's a pretty good, could try four sixteenths. Oh, how do I go back? Let's use this. Two sixteenths, right. Okay, so let's come out of that. Let's start the transport. Now, because we're on scene B, we're not going to hear track two because I haven't started it. There we go. Okay, it's still going. Why is that? Why? Let's go back to this. Maybe we do need one shot trick. I can't remember. Let's turn it on, see what happens. Okay. Let's go into the sample settings. Let's turn loop off. Let's turn all of this stuff off, all of this stuff. That 
that's not doing anything. Right. Let's try this again. Okay, it's still going. Right, let's go into the function record page and maybe we can address... Ah, maybe loop is on. Let's turn loop off and now let's address the recording length. Let's set that to the same as the length of our pattern, our steps in that pattern, which was 12. So let's turn that to 12. So now it should just do a one shot. Yes, it did it. Okay, but uh, it didn't play and it didn't record anything. Isn't that interesting? Okay, maybe because the transport wasn't running. Okay, let's try now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's, this is complicated. <laughs> it's quite complicated, but it's really, really, really satisfying. Let's turn off one shot trig. So now it should loop for as long as I'm holding the trig, the trigger, the track trig, the trig track, the triggity track trig. Yep. And if I let go, it stops. Brilliant. Then we crossfade. We crossfade back to whatever our source is. Right. It's working. I'm getting excited now. I'm going to take my jumper off. All this rave has given me a heightened state of arousal. I'm starting to perspire. Okay, let's go back to track two. Let's enter recording mode. So basically what it's doing is it's recording and starting to play for 12 steps, then starting again. But we can do a whole load of stuff. We could maybe do something like three, three playbacks like this, right? This is what we're going to get. And the nice thing about it is, is that it's happening when we launch it and we can have whatever kind of launch quantize we want. So I had it to two over six, which I would think of as eighth notes, but I'm going to put it up to four sixteenths, which I would think of as a quarter note, I suppose and just see if that feels a little bit better. There's a huge array of customization, and I know that we like customization. It's, these things matter to us. So I'm going to start recording and playing back now on track two. So you can also hear that it's also re-recording. So very, very exciting way to kind of introduce a little bit of glitch, mangle, fuck it up, fuck up the music. I'm going to go back into that pattern and I'm going to add like maybe just like some 16ths here or something just to sort of show that it doesn't, that there's just a huge amount of flexibility. And remember, this is all going to be on a per pattern basis, on a per bank basis and per part basis, and not even factoring in how many scenes that you could have. I would probably think you would want to have scene A to be like a dry scene with whatever your source is, and then track B could just be an array of different crossfading over to these mangle, mingle mangles, Mrs. Mangles. A couple of things that are worth noting is that I think it's a good idea to have loop off and possibly take the release off in infinite, just knock it back a few, few numbers. This might come into play later on. Okay, let's now um, copy track two. Function copy, go to track three and paste that so we don't have to set up all that stuff again. Although we probably might want to assign it to record a buffer three. And that's fine, come out of that. And then we can um, do some stuff like change the scale for this pattern. So let's actually say that this one is uh, 16 steps. And let's just kind of delete all of this, but let's leave the recorder trig in. Let's see if that's still there. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, we need to change that recording length now to, um, yeah, we'll go with 16. And we'll try something different with this. Let me just check this is all checked out. Let me check it all checks out. Right, okay, it's fine. So if I was to just maybe do something like this to orientate myself. 
Oh, let's also go into the um, check that, the, yeah. So it's copied over all this information as well. Very useful stuff. Thanks, Octatrack. Right, okay, let's see if this is working. Yeah. Oh, okay, now we need to do the scenes. So let's, we're on track three. Let's hold scene A, min that, scene B, max that, and see if that's working again. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like the echo, you know, when you can put the echo in repeater mode, but way, way, way better. So let's do some stuff with this. Let's maybe put a trigless triggity trig there and map that to the rate. And let's try and do, I'm going to put the rate fully backwards. So the sample is going to start recording, play, get to here, and then start playing backwards. So it will go like forwards, backwards. Let's see if this works. Let's copy that, put that there, paste that there, and paste that there. Let's see if this is working. Okay. Yeah. It's a tiny little bit of a click, little bit clickety click on the trickety tricks. So let's go to... Let's maybe see if we can use the fade in, which is such a small number to dial in. Right, okay, and then the same for the fade out. One tiny little turn. Let's see if that makes any difference to get rid of those clicks. I don't know, I don't mind the clicks sometimes. Clicks and cuts, you know, remember that stuff? That was what it was all about. That's what it's all about. It's a little bit weird, but... Okay, let's disable the time stretch. Time stretch is off. S rate to pitch, time stretch, yeah. Okay, that actually sounds a bit weird. What's kind of interesting is that you can kind of just do it whilst not really hearing. Okay. Yeah, very clicky, but no one's gonna notice that. Maybe a bit of attack might fix that. Yeah, that's kind of helped, but not really. Okay, let's um, see if we can put some slides in here. Let's go to slide and just put slides on all of these. See what that's like. Ha-ha! Okay. Uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of, that's kind of all right. I mean, I th where do I want this to... Yeah, maybe I'll take... What, what happens if we take these out? There's going to be a bit of experimenting with this. That's going to do it. No, nothing. Oh, what the... Why? Why the hell not? All right, let's just put them back in. Maybe because I wasn't playing the transport. Am I playing now? Right, yeah. Let's see. Yeah, that's better. Still a bit clicky, but that's fine. Okay, so uh, let's maybe do some variation. Let's come out of those, come out of that. And then for this one, I might maybe do like, I'll take this one, do a function trig here, hold that, micro time that all the way to maximum so that it kind of, let's come back one actually. So that's kind of actually sort of moving that step to the next step, but not really, it's a little hack. And then I'm going to map that lock that to a rate of zero so it kind of does like a dead stop like a record stop type thing see if this works no it didn't why would that be then ah let's put that let's put that slide in see if that makes a difference oh my god i'm losing track of the okay yeah. And then if I let go, it stops. Brilliant. I love this thing. Yeah. Yeah. Can you see how much fun that's going to be? You can just like, it's like playing an arcade game, you know, but you're doing mashup. Okay, I'm going to take track two and I'm going to copy track two to track four. 
and do something a little bit different with this one, but around the same idea. So I'm going to go into my scale, set these to 16 steps. I'm going to go into the recording, set that to, well, I might try something. I might try something a bit different with this one. I'm going to say the recording length is four steps. So it's going to start recording here, then get to there and then go back round again. Even though that the playback pattern is going to be 16 steps, the recording length is going to be four. So let's see if this works. Let's put some of these in. Let's just check that it's copied over all the trig stuff. Oh, and we need to map the, the min there and the max there. Okay, let's see what we've got. Map this. Ah. Okay. Okay, change my mind. Let's go back to the recorder setup and let's set the length to 16, but let's have a recorder trig every four steps. So we're going to kind of update the recording every four steps. I'll explain why this is going to be cool very shortly. Right, let's see now what we have. Start the transport. Okay, we have a problem. There's a problem. Okay, I think I've worked it out. And it, yeah, we need to, we didn't do that. Shit, did I do that for number three? Yeah, I did. Okay, let's try number four. So we were actually recording back what the, the contents of number two. We don't want that. We want to record into number four. This is probably going to solve the problem. Yeah, there we go. Now we're writing in the recorder four and then it's going to stop when I let go. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. Let's just check. Let's go here. Hold, yeah. All right, okay. That's fine. All right. So let's um, go to over to scene B. Okay, it's playing to the end of the pattern. Well, sort of to the end of the pattern, which is a bit weird. Anyway, so let's, um, so basically it's going to record kick, snare, kick, snare. So we can kind of do like a kick and snare sort of repeaty thing. So I'm going to put like a few extra steps in here, but I'm going to give these all, actually, let's, yeah, let's say that this is like 50%. So we can do all the conditional trigs on here as well, like you just would with any normal pattern. Um, and then actually maybe... These ones I'm going to give like a re-trigger time. Let's say this one is like uh, 1 over 2. And then I'll copy that. Go paste that one there, that one there, and that one there. And then for this one, I'll give this one a slightly different time. Higher time, 1 over 4. These are incredibly awkward numbers to dial in, but let's do it anyway. 1 over 8. And then this one can be uh, 1 over 16. So let's see what we have. So we're going to have like a bit of a kind of beat juggly glitch up type thing. Yeah. Okay, let's go back into that pan and let's maybe put some triggerless ones in here uh, and get these to all play backwards. So it's going to backwards those steps and then we'll also in fact i could have just done it to one i'll do it to this first one this one i'll give like a condition of say 50 percent, so it's not all the time and i'll paste that here and here and here and then on the kicks and the snares sometimes they might also play in rip will do like a ping pong thing see if this works This is cool. 
Okay, I'm going to do one more on track five. Or maybe a couple more. I'll see, how, I'll see how I feel, right? Okay, let's go to track five. I'm going to do this. I'm not going to copy this one this time. I'm going to do it all again from scratch as a kind of refresh. So let's go to flex and let's go into recorder. Let's set this to recorder buffer five. Um, yep, yeah, okay. Let's come out of that. Let's go into function rec one. Let's say that we want the source material. I mean, you could record stuff from the other tracks as well, but that's that's a bit weird. I'm not going to do that. So let's say we'll record from track one. And then this one, yeah, we're going to say that this is 16 steps, maybe. Uh, let's start with 16 steps. I want to do like a kind of time stretchy, kind of granular time stretch one with this one. So I'm going to turn loop off. I'm going to go into, okay, that's fine. Come out of that. I'm going to go function. PTN down to track five and I'm going to set this to plays free and then this one is going to be halt oh my goodness me hold and then this one I'll also do for two sixteenths I used to be an eighth notes guy but I think I've moved to quarter notes now it's a much safer quantize okay let's come out of that let's put record on go function record put a trig in come out of that and then put a trig in here and offset it by one micro step. And let's maybe go to the scale and set this to twice as fast. All right. Okay, that's good. So we're going to need to map the crossfader. So we're on track five. Let's go scene A, min, scene B, max. That didn't take long. Okay, so I'm going to turn on the, hmm, yeah, I'm going to turn the retrig on, but I'm going to leave the time open because I might map it to an LFO. So, and then I'm going to put another trig, a trigless triggity trig here, there, and micro time that to nearly all the way to the end, and then I'm going to come back one. And then I'm going to go into the slide, put all the slides in, come out of that. This one, I'm going to give a start position of zero. And then this one, I'm going to give a start position of a very small number like eight. I'm going to start with 16. And so it's going to start recording and playing back, but re-trigger it very fast and slide very, very slowly through the start position of that recording to this point to get us that classic sort of time stretch. Let's see if it's worked. Yeah. Okay, I think maybe that going to 16 was a bit far, so let's try 8 to make it more aggressive. You see how I'm just kind of, even though I am going to experiment with the LFOs, I'm just using the tr parameter locks and just the first page, the sample, the source page to do all this stuff. I haven't even thought about what I could do with any of the effects, the filters, whatever. Okay. All right, okay. So now I'm gonna go, now I'm gonna use an LFO. I'm gonna go into LFO, page on track five. I'm gonna go to LFO one, and I'm gonna map the source to the re-trigger time. I'm gonna use a random LFO set the trig to trig and let's put the depth to something like 32 and then what basically what that's going to do is every time there's a trigger it's going to modulate the the re-trigger time by a random amount which means we'll get a different kind of granular window which isn't really a window it's just re-triggering it it's that old school trick of just re-trigger the sample and move the start position to get that time stretch thing so let's see how that's Okay, didn't work. Don't think it's working. Okay, that's going to be a problem. Right. So why didn't that work? Let's maybe just increase this a little bit to say... 1 over 8. Oh my god. Right, 1 over 8. Let's go back to this. Retrigger... Ah! the Retrigger re time. Wrong one. Okay. This should be right now. Yeah. 
Okay. Speed needs to come down. Yeah, this would be sick with like old amens, you know what I mean? Okay, okay, all right, thank you. Yeah, we've got a problem. And the problem is that the retrig is up on on this one. So actually we could maybe turn it off with this trick. Let's see if the, oh my God, wrong one. Okay. Uh, let's turn that to zero and maybe make sure it's down and indeed maybe decrease the release. Let's maybe put the release to something like 96. Let's see if that has made a shred of difference. No, not really, but it's probably because there's still Yeah. It's because there's still stuff that it's sampling, which maybe is not ideal. So Okay, let's look at what's going on on this page. See if we can figure out. Yeah, we're still recording quite a lot. We're recording more than we need to. We're only playing like a f not even a few milliseconds of, of, of the sample. So let's actually put the length down to something smaller. Like let's just, let's try two steps. Okay. That's not enough. Okay. Let's actually play the song. Yeah, that's a bit better. Let's try two steps. Yeah, it stops faster because there's it's sampling less stuff. <laughs> this is this is weird. <laughs> oh, this machine. Wow. That's I don't mind that little bit at the end. Yeah, it, it's, we don't want it tailing off forever. We just want it to stop dead. Anyway, that is all sounding pretty good to me. Come out of there, please. Right, let's. <laughs> yeah. And you can hold them for as long as you want. I mean, you, you need to, you need one hand. So, but you don't need to use hold. You can, you can set it to be, you know, a different trig mode. One, one, two, or hold. I'm just using hold because if I, I like the idea of like, if I let go, then it stops rather than kind of having to start it and stop it again. That's just, that's just my preference. You do it however you want. I don't care. Yeah, I like that one. Track four, I like. Okay, I am going to do one more and I'm just going to do like like a sort of pitchy pitch roll thing. And I, I'm not, I won't go through the process again. Instead, I'll just copy track two. Copy track two, track six. Copying and pasting makes me a bit nervous sometimes because sometimes I hit the wrong thing and I hit clear and then it... Ugh. Would, are you sure would be, wouldn't be so bad? There's probably people out there who are getting angry right now. I think you should just know it by now. You should just know. Why don't you know? What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Okay, uh, let's... Sorry, I had a little moment there. Just got a little bit of rage. Tiny little bit of rage came out of me. I mean, no idea. Try and... Try and live a rageous life, I do. Okay. Oh, hang on. Come out of that. Okay, so what we what we got in this one? Uh, six, this is twelve steps. Um, yeah, I guess if you want to free up RAM, it's probably just want to record for as long as you want to. I'm just going to set it to sixteen. Okay, so let's put um, yeah, let's put some more trigs in here, and then in the where am I? Yeah, and then in here we're going to going to do like a pitch up. Oh, 
pitch up might not work. We can try it. Let's go like a semitone up and then two semitones up and then three semitones up. Let's see if that works. No? Oh, wrong one. Yeah, it did. Yeah, it worked. Great. Uh, let's do the same thing again, but this one we'll do... Um, yeah, let's just lock that one as well. Okay, so this one we'll do like a semitone down each time. One semitone down and then two semitone down, then three semitone down. And I'm going to copy those to there and those to there. And then for these ones, I'm going to give them a retrig time. And then these ones too, uh, we'll map that to one over two. And then this one will map to one over eight, one over four. Okay. So now we're going to have some pitchy, you know, that kind of jungle pitch, pitch thing, pitch, pitchy, pitchy, pitch roll. But we need to do the fader. So let's go. We're on track six, min the volume on scene A, max the volume on scene B, uh, maybe take the release off, set the release to 96. Okay, let's see if this works. <laughs> it's kind of a bit stupid, but anyway. You just have to remember to like just cross fade back to scene A or you can if you want to do it the other way around that's fine but like I mean sometimes it might be quite nice to flick to scene B and know that you're in the dry as it were but um, you just need to remember because otherwise it's, it's just going to come to a stop. Okay, something bad is up. I think it's probably track six and the fact that these... You know what? I've changed my mind about those recorded tricks. They were stupid. I'm going to turn that off on those. And this one. In fact, let's actually map the retrig to one on all of them so that they're not going to retrig. In fact, actually, we could just turn the release down, map, uh, lock the release down on all of them. That might have been a better idea. This is not refined, but with a bit of perseverance, I think you could have loads of fun remixing anything in a button bashy style. Right, let's try this again. <laughs> Don't like that at all. I don't know why it didn't do. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's a bit better. You know what? Just one more. One more. Let's uh, go to flex. Track seven. Record a track. Did that one? Okay, that's record. That Okay, I need to address that now. It's recording the wrong, uh, recording to the wrong buffer. Um, we don't want that. Okay, let's go to track seven. Uh, flex and sign that to record a buffer seven. Okay, come out of that. Function rec. Good to have a little recap. I think if we repeat a few processes, it gets baked into the brain a little better. So 16 steps for this. 
because I'm going to do a slow DJ come to a dead stop. Um, that's all looking good. Put a record, ah, put a recorder trig in, come out of there, put one, put a playback trig in, micro time it one micro time to that way. Uh, function, trigless, triggity trig. Hold that, set the rate all the way down to zero. Uh, I've just remembered I didn't turn off all this junk on some of those other tracks, but that's okay. We can do this now. That's what's quite good about. Oh no, it's, oh no, I didn't do it there. Yeah, let's turn off. Okay. If we copy it over, it does, but if we don't, we've got to reset all that. I don't like, I don't try, I try to avoid the time stretch as best I can. Right. Um, let's see what we've got now. I'm lost because I got distracted. Okay, so let's do the crossfader. Yeah, let's put the slide in. Yay! In fact, let's move that. Let's actually move that to there. Yeah. Okay, we need to go into the um, five is fine, six is fine, seven, not. Um, well, I guess I could use this just as a, no, I won't. I'll stick, I'll stick with my plan. Plays free, um, set it to hold, and the track quantize can be, I'll leave it at track length. No, I won't. I'll put it to one <laughs> four. I can't decide. Um, yeah, that's all good. Okay, come out of there. So now seven, oh, six plays, seven plays. Yeah, okay, let's start the track. Okay, so probably I would think if you wanted to do like a turntable stop type thing, you would want that to be a one shot. So this is a good example of how we can say that we don't want, we, well, we do want it to be a one shot trick. Okay, so now let's see what that's like. It comes to a stop and then it ends until I re-trigger it. And indeed, actually, it doesn't even matter if I hold it or not. What was that? It's that track. Yeah, that's kind of weird. I guess in a panic, just double press stop and start again. Probably the thing. Ah, there we go. It's done it. It did it. Yeah. Probably it's because these have got. Which ones are the ones that have got retrig on? It's those ones. So probably what we want to do is actually param lock retrig off. Because these have got conditional trigs. So it's Yeah, those ones are the ones with it. Locked. So let's do a zero lock or a one lock on the ones where it does. That should alleviate that kind of persistent retriggering. <laughs> See what that's like now. No, it did not work. So I guess if you stop, if you take hold off at a point when it lands on a trig that's got re-trigger on, it just keeps going. I don't think there's anything I can do about that. Anyway, I'm kind of bored now. So let's just have a little recap. We're using the recorder buffers on the other tracks to sample something coming in on track one. I'm using a drum loop, but you can use anything. Could be an entire song playing from a static machine. It could be something coming in on inputs A and B or input C and D or all of them, which could be another electron box. It could be your iPhone, it could be a turntable, it could be a modular system, whatever. And then we're using the plays free uh, function on the pattern settings to basically detach each track's pattern from the main transport so that we can launch it when we want using these buttons. 
which not only starts sampling whatever's on track one, but also starts playing it back via a pattern. And you can get very creative with this. And, you know, I mean, I've, I've just done one pattern and there's a huge amount of stuff there. I could go to pattern two, copy this pattern, go to pattern two, change it to have a completely different setup. I think it's pretty cool. Let's listen to it. Oh my goodness me. <laughs> there we go. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that. Um, give that a try. Pull out your Octatrack and turn it into a big arcade-style remix mayhem machine. I'm going to go and put this set on my Patreon now, well, this project, I guess, uh, on my Patreon, where if you'd like to support me there, you can download that and install it into a set folder on your Octatrack and just play around with this. Take some of the ideas, copy it, do whatever you want. And I absolutely promise I'm going to be trying to put more Octatrack projects on there now that I've actually learned how to export the projects and sort of stuff and, and send them to other people and upload them places. So... There'll be some juicy Octatrack stuff on there in the coming months. Okay, that's it. Have fun.